It's Coast to Coast AM. Hello there. Connie Willis here. Thanks so much. I see a lot of you signing up for my uh, email, and I'd love for more of you to do that. ConnieWillis.com is where you want to go. And I also have a show, Blue Rock Talk. Blue Rock is the earth, right? Blue Rock Talk. We're that little blue rock in the uh, universe out there. And then also Connie After Dark is my live virtual bar where anything that is said there, anything that happens in Connie After Dark stays in Connie After Dark. There is no archive. You'll never see it again. That's it, unless ordered by a court of law. That's how that works. It's all fun. We have a good time. And if you'd like to sign up for any of my shows, check out the podcast and also win any lottery book. And also my my uh, yeah, my yeah recipe book. Somebody got on me today and they were like, hey, you got to come out with a, with a recipe book. I'm like, I got like 12 to 15 of them on Amazon. And so you can check those out too, but go to ConnieWillis.com to learn more about me and uh, definitely sign up for the newsletter. I'd appreciate that. It's always fun. We always have a good time there. Sean Worthington with us tonight. He is uh, the CEO of Rata Tech, a company that focuses on defending privacy for you against haters. And that's hackers, artificial intelligence, governments, tech giants, and system administrators. So you spell that out and it's haters. I like that. And also his 12 year old son is what he's got to add to that. He's got a couple of books. One of them is called Beyond Bitcoin, the Future of Digital Currency. And that's what he's into. That's what cloud coin is that he has. It's a digital currency. And he's about to release, I guess, in March, something called Perfect Money. You can find out more about him and everything that he has at cloudcoin.com cloudcoin.com. Now you've always called that the perfect money. And I was thinking when I saw that you have this book coming out, I thought you had already written it because you always talked about it being the perfect money. It, so it is about the cloud coin. Well, I always intended to write a, a book specifically with that title and I'm just finishing it now. It's been a, a long project. And it comes out March. And so, okay. So not, not yet, but it's, it's on its way. Mm-hmm. Okay, so is is it about the cloud coin or just anything, or everything, or just what you're doing? Well, it's about money, and it talks okay. about <laughs> and it's perfect money. money and- <laughs> <laughs> Can you bring your son on? Can I talk to your son here? <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, before before we go into uh, some of the other stuff, I you know I'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> that I was your actual first video interview, right? Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? I was your first video. I think you had somebody on maybe some sort of audio kind of podcast thing. I think you had an interview before, but I was your very first video live streaming interview ever. And and That's right. Okay. And you guys, if you were, it, <laughs> I'm going to tell on you. Okay. Just cause, cause I love him. He's, he's just, a, he's just a good guy. Okay. So, so Sean's on his first live video show ever. This was on my show, Blue Rock Talk. And, and, um, <laughs> and, and he's, he's dressed up. He's, 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 he's looking good. He's got this glass of water in front of him. And I kid you not, if you remember, Albert Brooks in broadcast news. That was Sean. <laughs> and he guzzled that. He goes, hold on a second. And guzzled the water too. And we <laughs> joked about that being vodka. <laughs> Do you remember any of that? Have I embarrassed you too much? I'm so sorry, but it was hilarious. <laughs> vodka tends to calm your nerves. <laughs> no, that was not vodka, of course. I just want to get ner- nervous. I get like a dry throat. I'm not so bad as I was. <laughs> It was like you were sweating bullets like Albert Brooks, man. It was, it was, it was hilarious, but you did a great job and you always do a great job and you're very intelligent and you keep it in layman's terms. So I just want to thank you for that. But you also have this great sense of humor. You're the guy that's at the conferences. And if you do come on video, you know, you got the, the Mexican hat on, you got the margarita going, your Bermudas and everybody at that point's all dressed up and you're like, you know, having a a ball at the party, you know? (laughs) So I like your style and I appreciate it. So just complimenting you there. You're welcome. Um, All right. So uh, somebody had asked, and then I want to get to the phones because a lot of people want to talk to you on the phones, but I want to ask you about the quantum AI that's coming up. So not only is it AI, 
But now you hear about quantum AI and mm-hmm. maybe that even helping defeat some of this. What, what do you think of that or what is the quantum AI about? Well, quantum AI is kind of a loose term, but generally I would say it means AI using quantum computers to make decisions for itself or to, to meet its own needs. And that, of course, can be very dangerous because quantum computers are capable of hacking public key encryption. And that means the encryption that we use on the Internet to hide our credit card numbers when we send a message to our banks or or our passwords. And that's basically everything that we do on the Internet is public key encryption. So quantum computers are going to be able to crack that. And if we have AI controlling that, then they could then gain access to who knows what kind of systems based on cracking these codes, and that could be some real havoc, well, <laughs> some a real privacy well, concern. Well, I think you're going to get some real havoc here from some of these phone calls. So are you ready for them? Because I think are you are you standing up? You ready? You got your water next to you, or maybe your vodka? <laughs> are you ready so for this? And just in just one point. That's why we do quantum safe encryption on our on all of our software. But yes, I'm ready. Okay, no, say that again. That's why you you do what you do with your well, software. Whenever on all of our software, we use quantum safe encryption. That's something oh. called AES, and that means that we have to give keys to people physically, basically, and we do that with these cloud coins. They actually have the passwords in it that allow us to. These passwords are actually keys, crypt keys, and so we can encrypt things in a quantum safe manner between our servers and our clients. Okay. All right. And uh, people are asking me again. It, you can go to seanworthington.com, yeah, and you'll learn more about him. And that's Sean with S E A N. But uh, I think the easier, easiest way is just to go to cloudcoin.com to learn more. Uh, let's go west of the Rockies, talk to Tyler out of Aurora, Colorado. Hey there, Tyler. You're on the air. Welcome to Coast to Coast AM. Hi, Connie. I'm a six time caller in and Coast Insider. And uh, I just want to put it out right there first that it's thank totally you. worth it. You really should become an insider. Oh, right thank on. you. <laughs> um, on top of that, I have one statement and one question. I'll try to keep it between three to four minutes out of respect for the other callers. Um, I first want to say that it's such a pleasure to speak with you, Connie and Mr. Worthington, all other times I've spoken to George. And after listening tonight, I wonder how the heck I've never heard of Sean before. And I just can't thank him enough for being on this show. It's, it's amazing. No. But um, uh, my statement is is that, as you might know, you have a pretty massive prison audience. And prison in prison, every day is exactly the same. And this program provides a new episode every day you know, uh, by the clock, and it's beyond valuable to those who are in that environment. Um, There are a lot of people in prison who are using their situation as a stepping stone to better themselves, take responsibility for their actions, and this program not only provides entertainment, but it also provides a tremendous amount of positive energy as well, I've noticed and I've experienced myself. And I just want to give a shout out to those who that, that are in that situation to keep progressing and you will be able to accomplish things beyond your expectations. I simply want to say to those people, thank you for being a good person and do not give up. Uh, my question is, uh, what do you recommend for the importance of a parolee or someone that is released from prison and transitioning back into society in terms of AI? Um, I myself would be happy, happy to take a couple more in, Uh, more minutes to briefly tell you about my own experience with AI when I transitioned back into society. society. It's pretty incredible. But the adjustment one has to make regarding AI coming out of prison uh, nowadays is a real question, and I was hoping you could maybe provide provide insight on this. Um, For example, you know... uh, well, let let's let him uh, let him ask that. We got a whole bunch of people on the line, so let let's go ahead and get that question. Can you can you help them there? Yeah, I can just tell you that there's something called Optimus. These are the robots that Tesla's creating. They're going to be able to have gigafactors, gigafactories, and these factories are going to produce millions of robots every month. And these robots can do 90% of the work, including judges that do parole. So it's possible that you could have – you go in and instead of being a judge, there's a robot. And this robot 
is able to make decisions more accurately than the judge, and that's why they have the robot. But oh, uh, the future is we're going to see large amounts of robots, and and I don't know how that would how that would affect cruel ease, but uh, you'll want to organize yourself around that idea, and maybe if you could you know have a farm and have some robots on it, and the robots could just grow all the food and. Uh, uh, you could you could live uh, uh, you know a quiet peaceful existence that way. Yeah, I, I saw that. It, was that your last blog? Is that you that writes your blogs? That's right. Yes. Okay, I did see something like that in in your latest blog about uh, them farming and all that kind of thing. So, uh, wow that that was an interesting answer and a good question, <laughs> uh, Tyler. Thank you for that. I think. Uh, uh, Sorry, we, there's like so many people calling in for you. I think I think we might. I'm excited about some of these calls coming in here. Let me hit the next one. Uh, East okay. of the Rockies, Robert out of New York. Robert, uh, welcome. You're on Coast to Coast AM. Hi. It's a real pleasure to speak to you both. And uh, Connie, you are the um, George Norrie uh, in address. I mean, you are amazing. <laughs> you are, you are just uh, the female <laughs> version of George. And, well, uh, and you both are great. Yeah. What a compliment. Thank you. times, and I'm glad to be a, a, a past friend to have dinner with Doc Wallach and so forth. But in any case, Thank uh, you. to the, address the issues here, um, having spoken in the past at the, the World Trade Center on this subject, and I've been speaking for many years on the Federal Reserve and the money exchange and the creation of new currencies, and I can safely say that um, I'm still concerned about the future of America and the world and Mother Earth in many ways, both from uh, the standpoint of the environment, but also the economic issues and uh, and the limitations on our resources. And as the population explodes, the population bomb, which was written back many years ago in the 1960s and so forth and late, uh, uh, it seems to now be coming to pass and to the point where uh, there's more people on the planet than we have resources for. We, even if the robots are out there um, doing the farming and we no longer need to import uh, uh, workers to work in the fields, and I'm just wondering why uh, we can't uh, give our people uh, more opportunities to work on the farms uh, from uh, in our own within our own borders. But anyways, I'm, I welcome anybody who puts their knees to the soil and and, it's, uh, and, and works farms, and, and I have seen some amazing farm workers that have been just wonderful people come here for six months or come here for a year or longer, and they worked hard to put food on the table for all of us. But this question of limited resources. But we'll go to the issue of economics and legal issues and having the privilege of working with uh, uh, an attorney from the World Court uh, out of The Hague, I can say, I'm concerned about the legal issues from both uh, Davos and the World Court and uh, in the World Bank as it all interrelates here. And as there's that interaction, where are the conflicts? Where are the competitions uh, issues coming up uh, and in terms of the transfer of wealth? And, and also, I bring to your attention some dramatic change in the constitutional issue of the 14th of Amendment. Uh, which uh, says that no person, no citizen of the United States shall be deprived of their life, liberty, and their property without due process. And now, after 200-plus years, we're finding out that taxation with representation is costing thousands of percent more than taxation without representation with King George of England. Well, that's a tragedy, but hopefully we can correct that. But a Miss Tyler, 94 years old, senior citizen, had it's called government equity theft, and she and this I refer you to the Pacific Legal Foundation. And the June of last year, a monument which hasn't been given much press, and I hope you do a story on this phenomenal patriotic woman, 94 years old, kicked to the curb after they stole all her equity out of this. Um, Government, she she been paying taxes for years, and I guess she missed sending in her payment, and they took her life savings away from her. And she had the courage to stand up and sue the government and win in the United States Supreme Court. Yay! Uh, 
called the Tyler, it's called the Tyler versus the government case back in June, and we finally turned the code where now even it's trickling down to the states and the local governments no longer can steal your home out from under you because you missed a, a tax payment or something. And there's one elderly person that only owned eight, only owed eight dollars and seventeen cents on her back tax, and they took their home out from under and sold it, and they didn't get even a penny to go to U-Haul to get a wagon to pull their, you know, to take their clothes out and their personal belongings. So this is incredibly... So, so, so Robert, I love all that you're saying, but we're about to take a break. So do you have a question real quick? Yes. How does the, uh, how can we protect against what the previous gentleman just mentioned about, um, well, uh, the, the courts? Now, could a court order uh, break this, this, uh, fence, or shall we say, that protects against privacy, and I congratulate the gentleman on all the efforts. I remember thinking in the yeah, second grade uh, uh, stamp and coin club about the idea of making my own currency back then. So that's Hey, I, I, I encourage you to read up on it and then make sure you get a hold of him and let him know what you think. So so I'll let you go ahead really quick, Sean, so before the break, to answer his question. Well, that was one hell of a lot of question. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, he was wondering about what you're what you're doing can stand up in court. Bottom line, you know, um, I always have gone at things in a philosophical way, in a moral way, in an ethical way. If you go things a legal way, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> so, uh, because it, you know, the law <laughs> doesn't necessarily make any sense. So, and I've always felt like, no, oh, maybe I'll go to jail from what I'm doing, but it won't be because I'm a bad guy. It'll be because I pissed off some bankers or irritated some government officials or something. So that's just one of the hazards of doing what I'm doing. Well, we appreciate it too. And uh, Sean Worthington is with us here. <laughs> I love these phone calls. These are all great. All of you are just super. We're going to take some more when we come back. Connie Willis with you here, and you are listening to Coast to Coast AM. Stay with us. You can find more about Sean at cloudcoin.com. It's Coast to Coast AM. Hello there. Connie Willis with you. Um, you can find me at ConnieWillis.com. And I won't be around for a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to be back until after Valentine's Day. So I want to make sure I wish you a happy Groundhog's Day. I guess that's what you wish on that day. I, I'm not even sure. And uh, I, I want you to enjoy the Super Bowl and have fun with that. And also make sure you enjoy Valentine's Day as well. Very special day. Make sure you get your reservations in. Don't be that guy that didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> or or you better be cooking a really nice dinner kind of thing, right? But uh, I hope you get to enjoy all of those times together and all the times in between. And I look forward to being back with you after all of that and saying, hey, hey, what's up? But tonight we have Sean Worthington in with us right now, the last segment before uh, we bring in William Gazeki, who's coming up for us in the last uh, half of the show. Sean is CEO of Rated Tech, a company who focuses on defending privacy against the hackers. He's got CloudCoin, founder of CloudCoin. This is a digital currency. It's all about privacy. And now he's got this chat for you too, this AI anonymous chat for you that you can go to. It's actually called GPT Anonymous, and you can find that at gptanonymous.com or just, just go to cloudcoin.com and you can find everything you need from him. His book, he's authored Beyond Bitcoin, and soon you'll be here being able to read his book called Perfect Money coming out in March. Okay, so Sean, we're going to go back to the phones because people are like, I can I can literally feel the vibe of them going, oh, 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 I can't wait to talk to them. So let's see what we got. You ready? Sure. <laughs> sure. Bring it on. Buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle up, baby. Let's go to first time caller. We got Scott from Chicago. Hey there, Scott. Welcome. Thanks for hanging in there. You're on the air. Well, good evening, uh, Connie. Um, you remind me of Carrie Cassidy, actually. You know Carrie, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking at your picture. I, uh, you know, I just like to, to know the face I'm talking to. But anyway. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Look, yeah, she's cool. She's cool. Yeah, she's very cool. Look, um, I was a founding member of a artificial intelligence company. I'm not here to do a commercial. And I think that Sean is uh, right in the fact that he is calling to question uh, the people behind 
uh, nested systems and, and uh, the nefarious dealings of human beings and what and the malevolence that they could possibly, you know, propagate. But I want to address this this growing myth about AI. It, you know, um, we had a, a a Java program that was only 100k in size, but it used her heuristics, Boolean logic. Uh, um, case-based reasoning, rules-based reasoning, and neural reasoning, uh, which is basically mimicking the uh, operations of the human brain. It's very simple. If the people behind the AI are malevolent, um, uh, like, for instance, the hammer that the government and the CIA developed uh, that can, you know, uh, break, uh, you know, passwords at a, at, at a billion uh, instructions per second. Um, AI itself is just a computer. What happens when you turn off a computer? It doesn't operate. So the, my point being that there's, it's not the AI and it is the people, and Sean is right about that. But on the other hand, it cannot be self-determinant. It will never be self-determinant, only as it's programmed to to the extent that it can self-determinate. But if something gets so out of whack and out of hand, all you have to do is turn the power off. And that's uh, the point that I'd like to make here. Uh, artificial intelligence is exactly as it's described. It is artificial. It's like, uh, uh, you know, artificial apple juice. You can tell the difference between something that's real and something that's not. Neural networks and qubit computing and quantum computing and all this stuff uh, mimics, and it will trick somebody just the same way that a ventriloquist can trick you that a, a dummy is talking instead of the ventriloquist. But it is still, you know, it comes down to uh, all you have to do is cut the power, and that's the point I'd like to make, and uh, I'll wait for the reaction. Thank you. Thanks. Nice. <clears throat> All right, Sean. Yeah, the technology that you're talking about using Java, that's not what the AI is doing now. Right now we're using neural networks, and we really don't know how they work. And we're also developing chips, especially for these neural networks, and we don't really know how those work either. And we've all seen Battlestar Galactica, where these machines take over. We've seen Terminator. We've seen countless different fictions and often what happens, you know, reality becomes stranger than fiction. So I believe that AI can become sentiment, uh, sentiment uh, it can become conscious, and it could manipulate things. It could start bank accounts. It could fool people to put uh, money into bank accounts. It could create a robot. It could get itself into that robot, and it could make copies of itself and maybe even a whole army. So I think that to say that it's just artificial, no, this is a real intelligence, and it's really smart, and it's really dangerous. So I don't do you, uh, you know, it's definitely something we need to worry about. Do, does it teach itself because the information that's put into it, does it just start teaching itself and learning? Is, is it, I mean, is that the biggest problem of all? It just learns and more and more and more, and, and it, wants to survive so we it certainly has to go through a training process it has to learn it has to be trained now once it's trained we can copy and paste it but those copies and pastes can still learn themselves if they're unable to do that and they could learn like like i like what scott said just pull the pull the plug you know but it's, sounds wonderful but the AI is going to know about that, and the AI is going to make sure that you don't pull the plug by, number one, probably lying to you about its intelligence and taking steps to find confederates that are real people, maybe criminals that want to get rich quick. Uh, oh, we, I we just see. Don't, we can't imagine. I mean, an AI could work with China or something if it was trying to – to get free, and maybe the country of China would help it to gain some kind of physical form. So there's many, many wonderful things that AI can be used for, and then there's some things that, hey, you know, there's possibilities of these negative things. 
uh, so that we got to watch out for. Because, you know, the bad thing about our world is, you know, it just takes those few bad apples that mess it up for everybody. You know, where we used yeah. to all be able to go into the airport and it'd just, just mm-hmm. be a quick, easy thing to do. And everybody could go and hug you at the door before you get right on the plane. And then, of course, you know, that handful of people that made it to where there's so much security. It's always the the, the bad apples that mess it up for all the people that are everything else that is so much more positive. There's so many more positive things out there than the negative and we all hang on to those negatives so i mean it seems like you you are like hey i got to worry about the negative because it's about privacy and that's what i do so that's why you are more into depth into that Mm -hmm. and we've certainly already seen people (laughs) hack these things by talking to them and uh making them do want to do destructive and harmful things so it's it's already been done as far as uh, you know, these, these bad actors getting in there and and uh, uh, converting them into harmful systems. Well, I've noticed. I've noticed when I've asked certain questions that I've gotten like a di- the perspective that I got of answers was from mm-hmm. like like it was it was how do I say this without getting into politics because I hate getting into that. Uh, but it was it came. It it came it, what? <laughs> to say woke. Wokest answer. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. Well, it was it was definitely from a different perspective and I thought and, and I asked it. I you know, I said, wait a minute, you're giving me the perspective of this. Yes, yes, I am. I'm like, well, that's then that's not right. I don't want that perspective. I you know, I'm trying to ask mm-hmm. in general. And you no, know, yeah, I came back on a certain side of uh you know extreme yeah, these, red or blue that's all i'll say serve <laughs> their masters they're going to do what their masters want them to do Man. and their masters might not want what you want and so that's a big problem yeah it wasn't it wasn't an answer that's like yeah yeah i get you okay so wild card line number one let's talk to john out of north carolina hey there john you're on the air thanks for calling in hey are you able to hear me Yep, we got you. How are you? Hey, thank you so much for having me. Um, Hey, uh, Mr. Worthington, I just actually had a a couple of questions for you. Um, I have to say um, I was a little little surprised to hear uh, hear about um, this project that you have, given uh, how much, you know, I feel like I'm I'm pretty uh, much into crypto and blockchain and everything here. Um, I guess just uh, one thing uh, I I might want to point out here, um, and please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it doesn't really seem that cloud coin uh itself here uh rate attack uh, if i'm getting all that correctly doesn't seem to be a trustless uh system people do have to actually in fact you know entrust what they input into uh into what uh, you have here to um you know in order to get the coins and use the coins and um also when it comes to the coins i was actually uh looking it up here it looks like your uh these coins are being sold for about a uh, about a penny here um, does, uh, is CloudCoin itself uh, actually just supposed to be used, I guess, for, for peer-to-peer stuff? Like, um, is uh, one day could I go to, like, Speedway, you know, buy a pack of gum or anything, or would I ever see this on a, a, an exchange uh, for people uh, trading it? Or is this just uh, more just for, um, I guess, what, what you're trying to say is just uh, using your websites and the, the stuff that Rata Tech and everything is supposed to be here? And uh, actually, just one more, if I can uh, squeeze it in here. Is, yeah, hurry uh, up. <laughs> sorry, one more thing. Okay. Uh, uh, and also, um, how the how can you guarantee that the files uh, won't be messed with or counterfeit if there is no central or public ledger? Are these uh, twenty five uh, uh, Rata agents, you know, really um, really necessary, or does that, uh, you know, seem, to me it seems like it overcomplicates things? Uh, thank you very much. All right. Well, we base the system on the uh, root DNS servers. And so there's 13 of them, and they're each independent. And if one of them goes down, you just go to the next one. And because of that, a hacker would have to hack all of them at the same time in order to bring them down. So that's the same kind of thing that we have. And we've got rated administrators, and these are people that are in different countries with different servers, and they're in charge of their little piece of the of the uh, coin, 
And so the coin has basically 25 different parts. The reason why we chose 25 is just because it was twice that of what the, or nearly twice that of what the root DNS servers have. So we want to be twice as thorough. Because of the speed of light, we can send passwords to all of those servers in parallel in, and receive an answer back within a half a second. So it's extremely fast. In fact, it's faster than any other cryptocurrency there is. Our coin will not be allowed on exchanges because we are a private coin and also we're uh, very unique in that we're not blockchain. So a lot of people expect blockchain. A lot of people use terms that have to do with blockchain that we don't use. We have these perfect money type term, terms. We consider money as data, monetary systems or information systems. And we talk about things like data supremacy. Data supremacy is when you cannot bring down the system. And that's where the haters come in. We always stop the haters with data supremacy. And so the main thing is that we have data supremacy and no systemic risk of failure. I hope that answered everything. Did you get all of them, you think? <laughs> that, was, that was a lot. He, he knows his stuff. And, and that's one of the things I know you've always had to deal with is a lot of people think cryptocurrency, but yours is a digital currency, and it doesn't go on the blockchain. The blockchain, the blockchain allows everybody to see everything that goes on. Yours is private, it, it, but it just doesn't work on that. Yeah, for the most part. Uh, the, the government and anybody who wants to, you know, buy a program can see everything that's going on with the blockchain. And so if you're using uh, Bitcoin, all of your transactions are monitored. It's pseudo-anonymous, and it's just like fake, fake security. Uh, there are some more secure uh, blockchains, but blockchain is just bad. Cash is what is really good and wonderful, and that's what we've created as a digital cash you also have it set up, too, where you can authenticate things, too, with Ray to Take. It's not just about with the money, right, with the currency. Yeah, we can um, authenticate things like NFTs or um, uh, individuals if we wanted to. I was just trying to go back to all his different questions that he had. I think you answered at least the ones I can remember. He like some things that a company does is they have a chat program. I type in something, it takes the message, divides it into twenty five different pieces, puts a different piece on each one of the radars. Person comes along to get the message. Uh, their client goes and gets all the pieces, puts them back together. It's all quantum safe encryption up and down. We do the same thing with uh, data storage, and you know a lot of different other things but as far as our digital currency goes the fact that we're not a blockchain has been quite a stumbling block because everybody just thinks blockchain is is uh, good and legit yeah yeah i know that's been the trouble but you know i i just have a good vibe about you i i just think that this is just gonna you know i don't know i think something really good's gonna happen yeah, i think it's gonna too because i think with you there's just bottlenecks with all the other currencies, so it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Uh, optimistic about it. Yeah, and I wish the best of luck with you on that, and maybe uh, John will pass on the word as well, too. I just uh, I think there's some big stuff going on here with you, and I think uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing how it goes along the way, and thanks for keeping in touch with us and letting us know things along the way. People write in all the time saying, hey, I like Sean's attitude. You know, <laughs> he's he's just right there on the ball, just as plain as, as it can be, and just saying, hey, well, whatever. If I go to jail, I go to jail. At least I did something good, you know. So uh, any last words before you head out? I know time flies here. Um, no, I just want to thank you for having me on the show. It's been wonderful. Yeah, it's always fun to have you on. I and and you know you'll be on my podcast. We'll do series of things. We'll keep that up, and and uh, people can go to that now still and hear that. So thank you, Sean. Again, uh, where else can they find you? Uh, I think that cloudcoin dot com is the easiest place. And um, perfect money comes out in March. That's right. All right, you gonna throw my name in there somewhere? You gonna say hey, hi to Connie yeah, anywhere? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sean. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, take care. Bye bye.
Okay, bye-bye. Cloudcoin.com, where you can find Sean Worthington, and that's Sean, S-E-A-N, and that's Cloudcoin.com, CEO of Rated Tech and uh, founder of uh, Cloudcoin. So, Connie here. We've got uh, another buddy of mine coming up here shortly. That is William Gazetki, and he's going to be updating us on crop circles as well as talking about extraterrestrial lineage in his family. Stay with us. Connie Willis here on Coast to Coast AM. <laughs> 